Hi and welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith and in this video we're going to learn the 2-4 player game Lost Cities Rivals designed by Reiner Knizia and published by Cosmos who helped sponsor this video. Although inspired by the classic game of a similar name, Rivals introduces new ideas as you attempt to pursue successful expeditions through mountainsides, forests, and wilderness. So join me at the table and let's learn how to play. To set up, find and shuffle into a face-down deck the cards with this back known as the starting wagers. Then deal two face-up to each player, ensuring that no one has two copies of the same card in front of them. If someone does, replace one of them with a new card until their pair doesn't match. Then all unused starting wagers are put back into the box. Now shuffle all the cards with this back and divide them face down into roughly four equal piles. Then take one of them and set it in the center of the table as the current draw pile. The others will set aside for use later. Next, divide the 36 gold coins evenly among all of the players and give the player who most recently celebrated a birthday this first player card. And that's the setup. In Lost Cities Rivals, you'll be trying to lead successful expeditions in an effort to gain the most fame. The game is played over a series of turns, starting with the first player, and then going clockwise around the table. And on your turn, you'll perform one of two possible actions, either uncover or auction. If you choose to uncover, just turn over the top card from the draw pile and place it next to it. And that's it for your turn. Now every time a player chooses to uncover, a new card will be added to the right of this row, which is known as the display. And as you'll come to understand later, eventually a card may be revealed that no one can use. It should be then returned to the box and no replacement card is drawn. Now instead of uncovering, a player may choose to start an auction for their turn by bidding at least one coin. Then in clockwise order, each player must either bid a higher amount or pass. However, you may not bid more than the amount of gold coins you have. If you pass, you're out of the auction. But if you had bid before and it comes back to your turn again, you may bid higher or pass and so on. The auction will continue around and around the table like this until everyone is passed except for one player. That person then pays their winning bid to the center of the table into what is known as the gold supply. And then they may take as many cards from the display as they would like to to add to their expeditions. Each player should make room in front of themselves for up to five columns, also known as expeditions, one in each color. When you place the first card you've collected of a given color in front of you, it will begin that expedition. Any other cards you take of a color that you already have in front of you must be added to the column of the same color, offsetting it enough so that all players can see any of the values showing at the top of each one. The catch is that each card added to an already existing expedition must be equal to or higher in value than the card directly under it. So if I placed an 8 on top of this one, I could never add a red card here with a value less than 8. This matters because later you'll score points for the number of footprint symbols in each expedition, so if you can, you generally want as many cards as possible. Just so you know, each of the expeditions have two cards numbered from 2 to 5 with one footprint each and one copy of values 6 through 10 that shows two footprints. So keep that in mind when you're deciding what values to bid on or take. Also, don't forget you start the game with two of these wager cards and you may also collect additional ones from the auction as there will be three in each color found in the deck. These can boost your score later, as we'll see, but they can only be placed on an expedition column that doesn't have any number cards yet. So in this example, the player here would not be able to place wagers in the red or yellow columns. However, as you can see, you can have multiple wagers of a color within a single expedition, so long as they're played before any other cards of that color enter the column. So that should give you a sense of why you might want some cards during an auction and not others. And after you've taken everything that you want, you then have the option of sending one card from the display back to the box. And you'll likely do this if you see a card that you don't want, but that might be helpful to another player. But you do not have to remove a card if you don't want to. Any cards then left in the display will remain there to be potentially bid on in future turns. And players who lost the auction will take back their coins. 
At the end of the auction, the highest bidder turns over the top card of the deck into the display, and then the first player card is given to the player on their left. That player will then take the next turn. The game continues like this with players either uncovering or starting auctions until eventually the last card of the current draw pile has been revealed. Play then stops and the gold in the supply is divided evenly between the players, leaving any extra gold behind. So in this case where we had 11 gold here, each player would get 3 and we would leave 2. Then one of the set aside draw piles is brought in as a new draw pile and the game resumes. You'll continue playing like this going through all of the set aside decks until eventually the final card from the final deck has been revealed. The game now ends and any gold in the supply will stay there. Now each player will total the points from each of their expeditions by adding together all of the footprint symbols in each of their colors. If you have a wager card, it doubles the expedition value of that column. Two wagers triples it and so on. For example, in this blue expedition, we have a total of seven footprints and two wagers. So we would triple seven for a total of 21 points in just this one expedition. Then in each column where you have four or more cards, not counting wagers, you get a bonus of eight more points. So in this case, 16 more points. You also gain one more point for each gold token that you have. Then whoever has the most points is the winner. In the case of a tie, the tied players share the victory. And that's everything you need to know to play Lost Cities Rivals. If you have any questions about anything you saw here, feel free to put them in the comments below and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. You'll also find forums for discussion, pictures, other videos, and lots more over on its page at Board Game Geek, and I'll put a link to that in the description of this video. But until the next time, thanks for watching.